And a pleasant good evening, everyone. I am Willie Martin, a.k.a. Mr. Will. Hockey is back tonight. A sellout crowd of 17,000 or 18,768 filled up the American Airlines Center for Game 1 of an 82-game season. Blackhawks, Dallas Stars, a lot of history between these two teams. Go back to last year, day after Thanksgiving, Roby getting the injury, the multiple rounds of shootouts. Opening night, uh, if you get to overtime, that's a good thing. If you get to a shootout mode, you've gotten your money's worth tonight. Lindy Ruff and I talk about how it was a playoff-like atmosphere with the speed of the game going back and forth tonight. It was a game that the Chicago Blackhawks would win via the shootout by a score of 3-2. to two. And uh, much like that Texas Cowboys game a couple days ago, there was a sea of red in this building for all the Blackhawk fans representing for the tandem of Kane and Taze and Seabrook and uh, one-time Dallas star Brad Richards. I was actually, in fact, flashing back to that leap year day 2008 when Brad Richards played his first game as a Dallas star against the Chicago Blackhawks. And I believe it was a, what, a one goal and five assist game or something to that effect. Uh, the scoring began this night about 43 seconds away from the end of period one. So 1916, Duncan Keith would get his first goal of the year with assist by uh, Brent Seabrook and also uh, Patrick Sharp. That gave the Blackhawks a one to nothing lead. Dallas would then answer back at 10-13 of period two on his birthday, no less, Mr. Uh, Trevor Daly uh, making a power play goal. He got assists from Alex Hemsky and also Jason Spezza. That tied things up at one apiece. Dallas would then take a 2-1 lead in the second period when Cody Eakin would uh, get a pass to go his way, and he would rifle it, hit the post, get in the net. Uh, he gets his first. Ryan Garbutt with an assist. Ditto for Antoine Roussel. And then it would stay that way until 11-10 of period three via the power play. Uh, they're a relentless bunch, are those uh, Sh Chicago Blackhawks. Patrick Sharp would find the net. Duncan Keith and Patrick Kane getting assists on that goal to tie things up at two apiece. They went to the 60th minute. Nothing was resolved. We then go to the overtime. Something different this time around that I noticed wasn't the case years prior. They actually took a four-minute break, brought the Zamboni out, redid the whole uh, the, the floor of the American Airlines Center before resuming play via the overtime route. It used to just be one minute then on to overtime. I guess it's a rule change. I wasn't aware of that, so uh, I learned something new. Uh, we went to uh, overtime. Nothing resolved there, and we then go to the shootout route. Uh, I believe it was uh, four rounds or three rounds of shootouts. Only one goal was made. That was by Patrick Kane on Kari Lettinen. And I got to tell you, both Kari Lettinen and Corey Crawford made some incredible stops tonight. Shots on goal favored the Dallas Stars by 35-26 count. But Corey Crawford, in multitudes of scenarios where the, uh, the, the Cowboys, the Stars had uh, breakaway abilities to get toward the goal and make things happen, especially with Vernon Fielder, period three. Crawford was knocking, deflecting, kicking, poking, slapping away. Uh, there was one play where Helmerson for uh, the, the, the Hawks slapped the uh, a sure goal away with his hand, and this place was electric. And you had an equal breakdown of Hawks fans and Stars fans, like I said. So the Stars get a win. They lose in, uh, via the shootout round, 3-2 uh, to two the final score. Their next home game will be on October 18th against the Philadelphia Flyers, uh, the same day that TCU will be hosting the Oklahoma State Cowboys. That's going to be big. So a week from Saturday, 7.30, the puck will drop here. Get here early. Check out all the fine music entertainment and the sights and sounds of Victory Park here in downtown Dallas because if you're visiting Dallas, Texas, we do have the market on good looks and beauty and sights to see, maybe a cigar and a drink while you're at it too. So opening night here in Dallas, full turnout. Stars don't win. They get a point. Hawks and uh, shootout mode, they win by a score of 3-2. Other scores tonight off the top of my head, you had a couple of 6-4 scores. The Devils go into Philadelphia and winning by that count. Uh, Pittsburgh Penguins, they blew a 3-1 lead against the Anaheim Ducks at home. They went on the win by a score of 6-4. Uh, you had uh, the Columbus Blue Jackets winning in Buffalo 3-1. There was also another shootout win. Um, Drawing a blank on who, but uh, I do know that it was uh, Colorado getting beat up big time by the Minnesota Wild, five to nothing. L.A. Kings got clobbered by the San Jose Sharks last night as they raised the banner. And you are not to date on scores from this end. Oh, and at this moment, Houston Texans trying to make a comeback on the Indianapolis Colts. They were down 24 nothing. It now sits at 33 to 28. Do we finally see a good finish for a Thursday night game of the NFL? We're going to find out. I'll be back tomorrow night for the Dallas Mavericks and Oklahoma City Thunder. 
Uh, day before OU Texas, 11 o'clock here, uh, downtown Dallas. I'll also be in Waco on Saturday, 2.30 p.m. when TCU, who I believe will go to Waco and pull off the upset and get the win in Baylor and get to 5-0 and, oh and make a whole nation realize that the color of purple is not only the color of royalty, it's Gary Patterson putting a stamp on finishing what he didn't get to start last year in a 4-8 season to get to 5-0. You've been hanging with Mr. Will. I'm Willie Martin. I live for this. You know this. Thanks for checking in for the uh, stuff I put on the uh, YouTube videos, and thank you for your support. Until next time.